The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Kara Oosterhuis here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Wheat School episode, and I have here with me Charles Geddes, who is a research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. We are here today to talk about some of the herbicide resistance surveys he has done with Kosha. So what are what are some of the things you can tell me about it? So, so Kosha, it's uh, it's one of the first weeds to emerge in the spring. So um, there, there's been reports of, of, say, 80% of the Kosha population emerging before any other species in the field. So it's uh, by now it, it's um, we're, we're sitting at early April, and, and it's probably emerged already, and if it hasn't, it, it will be soon. Um, so that's one thing to consider, um, but the fact that, the, that a large amount of the population emerges early um, also means that there is a lot of pressure that's put on the pre-emergence herbicide. So it, it's really important to, to make sure that, that the uh, um, pre-seed burn down um, herbicide is, uh, is appropriate for the population that's in the field, right? So a lot of our survey work now is, is showing that uh, it's more likely than not, if you have kosher in the field, it's probably going to be glyphosate resistant. Um, so it's important to make sure that, that you're using other alternative modes of action um, to help manage those kosher populations. Um, and then the other thing to consider also is, is layering those modes of action that you'd be using either pre-emergence or pre, pre-plant with your post-emergence herbicides used later on. Now, do you want to talk a bit about uh, what you found with kosher resistance? Uh, where where are we at across the prairies right now? It uh, basically the the way that our surveys work is is we we do sort of a single province each year. Um, so um, the last the last survey of Alberta actually was was in uh, 2017, and then the the next survey is coming up this year. Um, but in 2017. Um, the survey found that uh, 50% of the kosher populations that were tested were glyphosate resistant in Alberta. Um, and then also the uh, group two resistance it ha- has been around for quite a while since, since the late eighties. Um, so basically we consider all kosher populations in Western Canada resistant to group two herbicides. Um, but more recently, um, one of the emerging issues with kosher is auxinic herbicide resistance or group four herbicides. Um, so currently, um, based based on the, the the last survey of Alberta, anyway, um, we're sitting at about 18% of kosher populations that were tested were resistant to dicamba, and then some of our um, newer research on those populations, it's also showing that uh, that there is some resistance to fluoroxapir as well. Um, so those those would be mainly used for post-emergence herbicides in in small grain cereal crops. So preventative measures, is there anything we can be we can be doing to make sure that resistance really doesn't get out of control like it might have really have done with glyphosate? Yeah, for sure. So especially especially with kosher, like it, it comes down to crop competition, right? So um, kosher produces a large amount of seed, up to 100,000 seeds per plant. And it's the plant is, is quite plastic as well, right? So it, it, it will... Uh, it will adapt to um, competitive environments, but part of that adapting is actually sacrificing seed production as well. Um, so, our our research um, or our field research has has shown that uh, anything you can do to promote a competitive crop um, will go a long way to help manage kosher. Um, especially, so one one of our field experiments, for example, is looking at a uh, wheat canola wheat lentil rotation and. Uh, Within those rotations, we're either using wide row spacing and recommended seeding rates versus narrow row spacing and double the recommended seeding rates, and um, it's it's visually visually obvious that the differences um, in the competitive environment there, um, and we're seeing over time that uh, that the um, greater um, the the rotation that has a greater competitive ability, so obviously narrow row spacings, higher seeding rates. Is is well outperforming that um, with wider row spacing and, and recommended seeding rates. So um, some of our some of our other field research again is look is looking at uh, at how do we how do we integrate um, sort of optimal herbicide programs in with um, with diverse crop rotation. Right? So 
Um, another another important factor um, for for kochia is that it's it's a summer annual weed, um, and it uh, it tends to produce um, viable seed fairly late in, in the growing season compared with other weeds. Um, so one of the one of the tools that, that we're currently researching is is looking at um, using uh, winter cereal on the crop rotation. So so adding something like winter wheat. Um, into the crop rotation, and, and what that does is it allows you to, uh, it allows that <clears throat> winter cereal crop to um, to grow mature, and you're actually harvesting that winter cereal um, before the kosher produces viable seed, and that can also go a long way to preventing um, the the introduction of viable seed back into the soil seed bank. So, is any of this work in conjunction? Like I know I've talked to Brianne Tideman in the past with her uh, harvest seed weed control. Uh, projects is is any of this in conjunction with that to date um to date our our research has has not um looked at at uh, specifically at, at the use of harvest weed seed control or things like the harrington seed destructor in uh, in a field situation i know that brianne had done some work um showing that if if kosher seed can enter the seed destructor um then um the the seed destructor has has high efficacy um, for for control of kosher seed, um, but we uh, we're still waiting on the opportunity to test some of those um, some of those strategies on on kosher populations specifically here in southern Alberta. So I think uh, there there's other tools that that we're just starting to research. So so things like uh, um, looking looking at uh, oxenic herbicide resistance specifically, right, and and trying to to understand um, the the cross resistance to oxenic herbicides within kosher populations, or whether it's cross resistance or multiple resistance, and basically what I mean by that is is that some of our survey work has has shown that um, there there is an overlap in say resistance to dicamba and fluoroxypyr in some populations, but largely um, what we've found is that most populations are either resistant to one or the other. Um, so we don't know if it's a single or if there's more um, mechanisms of oxenic resistance in kosher. Um, so that's that's one thing that we're trying to look at, but it also means that, um, that getting kosher populations tested for resistance is really important because you may be, um, you, the population may be showing resistance to say dicamba, but not to furoxapir or the other way around, right? So some of those herbicides tools still could be effective. Um, so it, so it's a, that's why it's really important to get those populations tested for resistance. And how do producers get, you know, if they've never got anything tested before, what's the process, what's that process like? Yeah, for sure. So, so there's there there are various diagnostic labs um, located throughout the prairies that offer herbicide resistance testing, and um, currently, our our research program is is offering um, testing specifically for oxenic herbicide resistance in kosher, um, because we would we would be considering oxenic resistance still sort of a unique herbicide resistant wheat biotype for the prairies, um, and my program specifically offers. Uh, diagnostic testing for anything that we would consider novel or or unique to the prairies. Um, so it, it's um, a bit more of an in-depth look at at confirming potential resistance that uh, that is is new to prairie production systems. So if producers um, so want to be a part of that program, how do they get hold of you? So the uh, the best way to to do that would be to send me an email. Um, so. Um, my, my email is just my name, so charles.geddes at canada.ca. Um, and if you send me an email, um, I have an information package that I can send out that explains how to sample um, the weed population for resistance testing and, and also where to send it. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs>